Hi people, how are you all doing? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. It is Sandra here and I'm back again with another video and today's video is titled College Girl Says ID Cards Are Racist and Affirmative Action Is Great. You would like you would really hear the most bizarre things from those people. ID cards are racist? An identification card? Okay, let's listen to her. Let's watch people. So Have let you. me ask you a question. So in the CRT literature, what what do they think of white people or whiteness? Um, who would you like me to quote? Kimberly Crenshaw. I haven't read Kimberly Crenshaw. She says that whiteness is a cancer or a toxin on our society. The concept of whiteness, the racial concept of whiteness. Okay, so what is whiteness? What is whiteness? Yeah, define it. As Kimberly Crenshaw would probably say, the sort of construction of privilege that comes with being white in this country. Right, so what, what privilege do you and I as white people have that black people don't yeah, have? Yeah, great question. Um, on applications that are blindly judged, white sounding names are often given the job more, they're paid Not more. Not true. In fact, it's the opposite. There's black privilege right now. It's called affirmative action. Hmm. Where underqualified blacks are taking Asians and white people's places in universities across the country. True or false? Um, the sure, the true. Okay, so yeah, there's black privilege, not white privilege I in this country. I actually don't think affirmative action is how we address in education inequality. Okay, well that affirmative action was lar is still largely supported by the CRT regime. But let's get back to CRT, to the essence of it. Sure. CRT believes in one manifestation of its ideology is black only dormitories. So white people are not allowed. Do you believe in black only dormitories? No, and I don't have to agree okay. with every no, you're, aspect you're of fair. an ideology Fine. to argue for it. So, so then what part of CRT do you like? Because they call whiteness a toxin, black only dormitories. And if you want to talk about like ideological or intellectual sloppiness, mm -hmm. the 1619 Project was, I think it's very sloppy. Okay, we agree. Nicole Hannah Jones. I think it's overstated, and okay. I think some you're, of the parts being are fair. inaccurate. Okay, good. Um, the parts of CRT that I think are most relevant, and you know, very factually, uh, you can, you know, s s what am I trying to say? There's a lot of evidence for them. Is the fact that previous inequalities, such as the institution of slavery, such as our treatment of Native Americans, do in fact affect those populations today? And you were saying before, in you know, inner cities, there's a lot more crime, and a lot of that is because of redlining and other like practices that come directly from the mistreatment of minorities previously Wait, okay. in this country. Okay, so I want to make sure I understand. So, so black people make up 13 percent of the American population. Oh, 1350, my favorite. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why do they commit 55 percent of all the murders? Super great question. Um, it's basically a very complex intersection of race and um, economic status. It's pretty well known that uh, minority people tend to be um, in a lower economic status because of discrimination. That so then why don't poor Asians commit a lot of murders? Also a great question. Um, Asian people weren't originally brought to America on purpose like black people and they weren't already present here like natives. Wait, so, I'm not so, finished, wait, so blacks murder because they were brought here 250 years no, ago? No, I would like to finish. Okay, just answer. It's very simple. B black. I am answering. No, I know, but you're, you're not really. You're kind I am. Of, okay. Asian Americans so, okay. predominantly immigrate here for work reasons. They come from already wealthy countries. They're already wealthy when they get here. Crime is committed primarily First by of all, that's not people. true. Talk to anybody from Viet who's a Vietnamese. Anybody? Did you? Did your family come here wealthy? No. Yes not and wealthy, no. Okay. But not wealthy, but not. I'm not saying no. they come no. here. Okay. The average I'm, Vietnamese does not come here wealthy. I'm not. Okay. I perhaps misspoke. Not wealthy, but a lot of the you know you complain about it all the time. A lot of the immigration from countries that border us, right? It's it's sort of desperate people who are of a lower economic status, right? And they're here for a better life so so two things number one there's been more blacks that have legally immigrated to this country in the last 30 years than were ever brought as slaves that's number one number okay. two you still haven't answered the question i'm, I'm trying but to wh why it's a complicated answer black people are only 13 percent of the population yet they commit 55 percent of the murders why because black people tend to be in lower economic statuses because of complex because of okay, no, no, this CRT. is fine. This is great. Basically, so you think that poverty equals crime? 
I think that it's um, highly correlated, and there's ah, a lot of studies. This is where on we that. disagree. What an insult to the working poor so of this country. So why do you think black people commit more crimes? Well, crime, first Charlie of all, Kirk? so how? Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question as no, my answer. answer. Go on. What percentage of blacks have a father around when they're raised? I'm not sure. Twenty percent. So eighty percent of blacks do not have a stable father around. It is the most predictable way to end up in prison, end up as a murderer or a criminal. And it's not a racism a problem. problem. It's not a white supremacy problem. It's a fact that black fathers impregnate women and they don't stay around with the women and that why, they have impregnated. Charlie Kirk, do you think that is, that happens more in the black community compared to uh, others? It's, it's threefold. Number one, we subsidize single motherhood. Number two, it's culture. It's accepted in the black community. And it oh, shouldn't so it's be. culture. Okay, okay. Don't okay, take my I word see. for it. Read Thomas Sowell's own book, on how black culture allows single motherhood to continue into a nanny state type practice. 75% of black youth are raised out of father in the home. 75%. Is that a bigger problem or not a bigger problem than whiteness, white privilege, or white supremacy? How they can should you all be addressed and they're all related. Okay, how is a white person to blame for the fact that 75% of blacks Oh, individual white people aren't at all to blame. Okay, we agree. Yeah. So, but wouldn't it be more like smarter to be like, hey, that this is not about systemic racism. Like, stop impregnating your women and abandoning them. Um, well, the way to incentivize not impregnating women and abandoning them is increasing access to health care, into housing, into everything that we know so, increases so we've those done outcomes that. for people. So we have spent $30 trillion on the social welfare system since 1965. Black people are poorer, and the single motherhood went from 25% to now 75 to 80%. So the more money we've spent on black America, the less fathers we have, because black women divorced black men and married the government. And do you think that's a problem inherent to black people? No, it's not. It's happening now in white communities and Hispanic communities. It's just the worst in black America. And why do you think that is? Why Why is it the worst in black America? There's also a cultural problem. There is, and okay, we have to be so honest just, about it. Okay, so it's just that black people are, are No, no, let me ask you a question. Like the, that, the average music that a black person in Compton is listening to, is it about contemplating the good, the true, and the beautiful, or is it about being a gangbanger and trying to get as much money and sleep with as, about as many girls as you can? I would actually like to think that's a I would be offended by that do you think <laughs> the my, average black kid in Compton is listening to Beethoven or some sort of gangster rap music that glorifies gangster culture silly question rap wasn't created to glorify gangster culture so even though there oh, is okay, rap I mean, I'm you're sure that's answering, doing you're, you're dodging the question because okay, I'm sure they're listening to rap okay that, so you th think rap go. music makes them no, leave I'm their not. mom do you think the cultural expectation in black America is that you stay with the woman that you impregnate um for within black communities? I can't speak on that. Okay, the answer is no. It's not. It's not expected. Okay, and do you in, think in, that in, is... Hold on. In white Anglo-Saxon Protestant communities... Oh, okay. It's a fact. Hold on. In upper middle class white communities... Upper middle class. Say that part louder. Yeah, upper middle class white Anglo-Saxon Protestant communities, if you impregnate a woman, you are looked down upon and we do not think highly of you if you abandon the woman that you impregnate. Mm -hmm. That's a cultural difference. Has nothing to do with money. Has nothing to do with anything except norms. And the norms that have infected black Americans America are destroying it from within. We need more fathers, not less. We need more dads around and less drag queen story hour. We need more we need more young blacks to to be able to look up to role models that are are not leaving all the time and are not just saying, hey, I'm pregnated her, so be it. It's a toxin, and if we don't address that as the root cause, oh, it's white supremacy, it's injustice, it's economics, we're dancing around the core of the issue. I guess what I'm saying is, right, and you've perfectly actually laid out the dichotomy here, um, it is a fact, obviously, that black people disproportionately commit crime in this country, no one's arguing that, but you either believe that that is due to a complex intersection of social, economic, and like leftover effects from previous inequalities, or you believe that that is an inherent trait to the race. No, I don't because they weren't that way in the 1940s and 50s. Black America was one of the most peaceful, flourishing, fastest growing economically communities in the country. It's not genetic. You're trying to point something on me that I don't believe. Instead, black America- But then you do America, believe that it's not on. genetic, so you do think CRT is correct. Hold on a second. So in, the, in, the 19, in the 1940s and 1950s, black America was prosperous and was on pace to be richer and wealthier than white America. More dads were staying with 
the women that they were with. There was monogamy. What changed? You're supporting what, my argument. No, hold on. But what? A, answer the question. What changed? Did America get more racist since 1950? The 1950s. I would argue there were more racist policies passed. There were more policies on a dedicated in to the lining in the off in the those communities and pushing them into poor housing and poor schools. Wait a second. In the 1950s. Jackie Robinson had not even broken the color barrier. We had Jim Crow laws. We hadn't passed the Civil Rights Act, and we hadn't passed the Voting Rights Act. Yet blacks were better in the 1950s per capita than they are today. So we have become less racist. We've passed more anti-racist laws and given more stuff, and blacks are worse than they were 70 years ago. Yeah. Why? So you're um, equating here institutional and social racism. Social racism was certainly worse in the 1950s, I'm sure everyone would agree, but institutional racism occurs when policies are passed had, against people, Come on, you, you, which can increase you're, you're, over time, you're, you're, and it did. You're not being intellectually honest, you know that. There, there was black-only drinking fountains in the 1950s. We don't have those any anymore. Well, we're bringing them back with you know, black-only dormitories, but we, we had... <laughs> We, we had, we had, for example, in the in the antebellum South in the 1950s, we had white-only communities. White by law, we got rid of that with the Civil Rights Act. But it didn't. Okay. Unfortunately, un we look around; the numbers speak for themselves. Black youth are less likely to have fathers. They're not doing as well as far as economically. They commit more crimes. So something changed. And our argument is what changed is three things. Number one, the imposition of the Great Society Project by Lyndon Baines Johnson of spending $30 trillion since 1960s on Section 8 housing, on welfare, on, you know, all sorts where, as I said, that young black women married the government and they divorced young black men. And then we also have had, the, as Thomas Sowell and as Clarence Thomas would say, the soft bigotry of low expectations. And we, we have been afraid to get to the root of the issue or even speak about it because we don't be called a racist. So who, what is imposing those low expectations? It's, it, part of it is like white academic culture. I'll give you an example. I'm not saying you believe this, but Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, has come out and said having an ID to vote is racist. That, that is code for saying black people are too dumb <laughs> to get a voter ID. You're doing it again. You're you're simplifying a very nuanced, complex argument from the real people who are making it. Is voter ID it. racist? Obviously not, Charlie. Okay, all right. Do you want to know where the argument comes from? I can eloquently tell you. Uh, eloquently <laughs> tell me why the, the voter ID is is racist Great. or whatever. Certain yeah. policies in southern states were proposed that would, like, I think the quote from the um, uh, person who decided the case was with surgical precision target the times where black people were voting and make it like illegal or harder for them to get that uh to come at that time and then they were targeting the type of id that black voters had and making that specific type of id illegal that is racist per perfectly fair how does that impact today saying that every citizen if you, you need an id to vote just that aside why is that right why is it racist because we have to have you know, obviously humans are making those decisions, right? And so if there is still institutional racism and people in power that are racist, we can't trust those institutions what, to make those what, decisions what without discriminating What institutional racism do we have in this country right now? What you just named it. What? <laughs> 1350. I, I, okay, well, I mean... Affirmative action needs to happen because there is not that many minorities in these higher educations or higher education institutions. Okay, so that, no, that you're, you're, you're being clear, which is then you lower standards. No. That, uh, affirmative action always that. does. Affirmative action lowers standards by definition. There's I'm saying why affirmative action was introduced. I'm not arguing for it. Were you asking me why it was introduced? or? No, I'm saying oh. you agree that's why it was introduced. Well, I, I agree why it was. I don't think it ever should have been, but yes. Right, I mean, but there is institutional inequality, yes? Well, I wouldn't even use the word inequality. I mean, I, I don't love looking at it that way. But of course, white people generally are richer than black people in this country. Richer and more represented in politics and schools. Yes. Somewhat yes and no. Why do you think yes that is, no. Charlie? <laughs> well, hold on a second. Let's, let's ask the question here. Represented how? So, I mean, Look at Congress, so, man. No, hold on a second. Are white people represented fairly in the National Basketball Association? Who cares what political Hold power on, does the national... Hold on, I thought we were all about fair representation. Ah, uh, listen. I think that it should, by law, half of the NBA should be white. Great, fine. And and the product would suck. Lobby for it. Because blacks care. are much better at basketball than we whites are. What political power does the NBA have? A lot, actually. The NBA reaches millions of people every day. They have slogans that people internalize. In fact, if the NBA had no political power, why would they have to wear Black Lives Matter on all their jerseys? Why would they tell... Why would politicians try to get their endorsement? 
advancements all the time. The NBA is more powerful than Congress in some ways of okay, shaping the minds. Okay, I think it's minds. your turn to be hold academically on, dishonest Hold on now, a second. No, sure. no. But if you want fair representation, just to be clear, then why would you not be against whites, by law, being half of the National Basketball Association? Right now, sure. black people make up 88% of the NBA. Do it. Great. Who cares? No, I don't care. But, I'm saying, okay. right. So here's my point. All right, if fine. We have I have a shot, everybody. Please listen. If we, I could play for the Lakers. I hope you do it, Charlie. I'll come to your games. I'll do it. The point is this, is that merit should triumph over all Which of it. Which is awesome. Okay, so merit should triumph. We agree. Okay. Okay, Charlie, do you think black people are not as smart or competent Absolutely as white not. people? Perfect. No. So they should, in theory, then be equally represented no, in they, positions no, but of power. No, hold on. Let me, so have you ever read Discrimination and Disparities by Thomas Sowell? Do you only read Thomas Sowell? You've quoted him like three times. I haven't read no, that. No, I read a lot more than Thomas Sowell, but I'm happy to... I mean, Thomas Sowell's the only intellectual with the courage to go after like these core issues of why black America has fallen behind and why no one actually has studied it. So let's just give a great example. When you don't have a father in the home, the amount of words that a child hears goes down by 60 to 70%. The amount of words that a child... I, I don't know if you're a mother or not. Or, no. <laughs> or plan to be. Okay. No, just it's, it's an important point. The amount of words that an 18 month year old hears is highly predictive of IQ, verbal development. Okay. So that's simple. When you don't have a dad in the home, the mom is overwhelmed and there's just less interaction with the child. That's all fine. Okay. So you, we agree. I'm just saying that is, that's not because of racism. That's true. Obviously, no, that's, that's fine. That's good. Uh, no, she, she's, she, she, I know what you meant. But you have a father in the home, all of a sudden, they hear thousands of more words a day, and they're they're already they're like way further ahead of a single motherhood, a single mother raising a child. That, that's not racism. Okay, so dads are good. Yes, great. Okay, what the, my question? I'm to saying you dads is, actually answer most of the the questions that I, you might have about why Black America is falling behind. Okay, but because their dads <laughs> don't stay around, and that's I'm trying bad. to sort of get to you ahead. to reconcile your own beliefs. And if that's true, which is fine, that's true. We can say that's true. Um, you either believe that that has social and economic causes, or you believe that, oh, black culture's just worse. No, and there isn't I think another that thing to think. No, Those I, I was options. very clear. Right now, black culture is being held captive by influences, songs, Which and role models. Which influences? I mean, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. Okay, Nicki Minaj is causing uh, dads to leave the home. Hold on a second. I don't think that's a good role model for 18-year-old black girls. I don't. I don't think that songs that are talking about like glorifying wet female genitalia is exactly, I don't know which one wrote that song. Which one was it? I think it was Ben Shapiro. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but is, is, but, and, but by the way, the role models of the 1940s and 50s for black America were completely different. So they, it is a representation issue. Hold on a second. No, not representation. It's who do you get your art from? It's what values are they putting forward? It's the question of, Every day, for example, more times than not, black politicians will lament the condition of America. It's systemically racist. It's terrible. What does that do to a 14-year-old black kid if you just find that you hear that everything is rigged against you? Instead, they should be saying, hey, there might be some barriers, but if you believe in yourself enough, you can achieve in this country. It creates a, a form of social conditioning I, of low expectations. And that's not my argument. Just... You know whose argument that is? Barack Obama's. Um, I don't necessarily Barack agree with everything Obama he said, said either, man. Barack Obama said, number one, we need no more fathers in the home. This is when Barack Obama Barack didn't go Obama's super Barack Obama's a liberal. I don't care what he's got to say. Okay, but Barack Obama, <laughs> then secondly, he said that we can't keep telling our black youth that you can't succeed in this country. Anybody can succeed and in this country. And Obama was right when he said that. Obama was correct when he said right. that we need to change the story we're telling black America. Which is fine. I've never heard any teacher look at a black person and say, oh, you can't succeed because of racism. Hold, hold on a second. Though. But like, what is the embedded message of all the propaganda saying it's systemically racist, you're going to run into racist employee, employers, that they're uh, going to discriminate against you? It, it creates this heaviness of why even try? By the time college students rigged. get to college, they've experienced all that. They don't need to be told. You think that the average, I'm, cu I'm curious, you think that, that the average black student at this university experiences like active daily racism? Um, I'd be curious. I'd, I'd just have curious. to ask. I mean, you okay. can ask him to raise I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's, maybe it's as bad as it was in the antebellum South. So. I'm not saying that, obviously. Okay. I did say Fine. social racism improved. I'm okay. saying institutional racism is still present, and that's what's causing lower outcomes for minority communities. Do, 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 you, do you think the reason why 
only 20 to 25 percent. It depends. We don't know the number. It's just a range per year. Sure. So one in four of black youth have a stable father around. What would you just say is the big? Why is that? The, why is that the reason? A what, what, complex what? intersection of social and economic reasons, which are outlined in CRT. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the dialogue. Thank you. Okay. Oh my goodness. I feel like this lady should have watched my video before going on there. But I know that's not possible because this video is like way back. But I always say if you cannot take on Charlie and if you're not well equipped with knowledge, don't go near Charlie's table and don't take the mic. This video is actually so satisfying. Like, I love when people who come up here with the intent to just be condescending and have no intent to learn and to have a constructive um, conversation, I love when they get what they're searching for. Or rather, when they get what they were in searching for, what they needed. Like, she, like, she was so dismissive. Okay, you're trying to have, like, an argument. You're trying to, like, get to somewhere. And you guys are having a conversation and he gives a point and then you dismiss him so what exactly why are you there are you there to only be listened to you don't want to listen to others and the the, the, the part where she was talking about like asians coming from a really wealthy country <laughs> that was hilarious that 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 just broke it you could see the asian guy who was in front of him he was looking at him like what what you know you know i feel like he was already having a, a enough of like the things she was saying like how very untrue a whole lot of things she was saying was like he was already having enough of it and then she just kept on going and he just had to like yo he said no and then she saw a point that she made being taken down and she just dismissed it she didn't want to talk about it she didn't want to like even like she just like what i'm like mm -mm, girl that ain't how it works, okay? That ain't how it works. But anyways, I'm glad I did get into this because I don't know why she feels like she has enough passion and knowledge and experience to be an advocate for the Asian community, the black community, the white community. I don't know I don't know why she feels that, but I really hope that she's gonna have like everything the orientation after this session that she just had because she needs to start afresh if, if this is really a cause that she wants to start she wants to stand for and she needs to do a whole lot more than she has been doing and speak to a whole lot more people than she has been speaking to because it, it's just not aligning to be honest but nonetheless this was very entertaining i'm not gonna lie i was thoroughly entertained i would love to know what you all think about this down in the comment box okay if you know that you do have things to share please do not hesitate to share your thoughts and opinions with me i'm really gonna appreciate it if you are yet to subscribe to my channel and you know you do enjoy videos as such please do give the video a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and share this video to a lot more people and upon the very next one people let us keep on staying safe and healthy bye